everyone, uh, this is Al Fadi, and welcome back to this uh, new video series on analyzing a brand new book that deals with some examples of corrections that were done uh, to early Quranic manuscripts. The book uh, is by Daniel Brubaker, and uh, we encourage all of you to get a copy of it because it's going to be extremely powerful. It is based on some of his research that was done for his PhD dissertation, and more of these corrections will be released at a later time. And with me here to assess this book is Dr. Jay Smith, and we've been doing a number of videos already or episodes uh, related to this topic. We built already the foundation for why these corrections are important. And uh, I'll turn the table now to you, Dr. Smith, to continue this fabulous discussion. Right. It's great that we're, I'm here. It's great that you invited me. I'm so glad that I can finally help Dr. Dan Brubaker. Uh, this is the book right here uh, that we're highlighting. It is published. You can get it on Amazon.com. Please go get it. And what we're going to do and what we, ha what we said we, in the last episode, we're just going to unpack each one of his 20 corrections plus one. So let's go to correction number two. Let's go and look at it. Uh, this is an eraser again in the Petropolitanus, which is the manuscript that is in Paris at the Bibliothèque Nationale there. Mm -hmm. uh, it is from Surah 42, Ayah 21. And, and, and Al-Fadi, what, what, uh, what is that word that's there uh, that we're looking at where the green arrow is pointing? Lahum. Lahum. Okay. Yes. And what does lahum mean? Uh, it it can mean something like uh, to them, basically. Okay. But that's not what it was originally. That's if you right. look, you can see there's an eraser underneath. You can very just uh, where the where we the pick the arrow is pointing. You can see that there is uh, a, a eraser, and they've written over top, and and you can see it's in a completely different color of ink. That's right. So so most most likely what happened is this. You know, I'm I'm just taking a shot at it. Uh, you know, just to show people how simple these things could be. It would have been lahu, meaning to him, and then it was fixed to be like this lahum, from wow to mim, basically. So the lam he has been changed with lam he mim. Correct. And yeah. so lahum to him has been changed to for them. That's right. So, and, and I would say you're right. I mean, it's, it's lahu, you know, again, another way of reading it, and then they corrected it to add the mim. Or de, yeah. do they have associates who enacted for him now reads, or do they have associates who enacted for them? Correct. So s simple as that, but why did they go from him to them? Well, I mean, it's obvious that uh, probably uh, the context itself doesn't permit, you know, something about an individual or singular, or they wanted to match the standardized copy, which is the 1924 Cairo Quran. It's actually the second. They had to standardize it to this book here, the Huff's text, which is what they're using all over the world now. Remember in the last episode, we mentioned that in Cairo they needed to do this. And they had a committee from Al-Azhar who made this, who mm -hmm. chose the Huff's text, a student who died in 796. That was just in Cairo. And that was in two, uh, 1924, so uh, what, 95 years ago. By 1936, when King Farouk came into power, mm -hmm. they realized that it was so successful. All the tests in Cairo were now standard. They got the same answers from everybody because they were using the same Quran, uh, that they decided to make it Egypt-wide. So all the Qurans in Egypt had to use the Huff's text. That's right. It had only been for the city of Cairo, and that was the educational authority that wanted it there. And they called it the Farouk edition, named after King Farouk because that's when he came to power. Power. So all of Egypt now had mm -hmm. one standard Quran, the Hafs Quran. Then in 1985, King Fahd over in Saudi Arabia saw the, the, what was happening in Egypt and he said, hold on a minute, we need to make this worldwide. That's right. And so it was the Saudi Arabians in 1985, 1985, we're just talking about what, 34 years ago made it official that this text, the Huff's text, was now the standard text for the whole world. So this standard text has only been around officially worldwide for 34 years, which makes right. me older than this text. 
Ooh, that makes me feel good. Suddenly I feel old, actually, is what it really makes me. So this text of the Quran has not been around for 1,400 years. It's not even been around for 95 years. That was just for Cairo, one city. Yeah. It not even been around for all of Egypt until 1936. It has only been around for 34 years, this official text. So when Muslims say, yes, they memorized it, and they talk about this girl here and this little boy here who's memorized the entire text, they're listening to this little girl and boy, and they, they are impressive. They are impressive. What are they reading? They're reading the Huff's text. They're reading this text. The only reason why those girls and little boys all over the world are getting it right is because they have something to read to know what they're getting right. They're certainly not reading the Waters or the Alduri. They're not reading the Khalid. They're not reading any of these other 31 that we have been able to find. They're only reading the Huff's text. That has only been able, they've been only able to do that for 35 years, 34 right. years, excuse me. Okay. Can you see? We need to nip the butt on this and say, folks, be careful when Muslims say they memorized it. They've only been able to memorize this text for 34 years, and in Cairo, for 95 years. That's right, that's right. And this is uh, so damaging, of course, because we're talking about a book that Muslims believe is 14 centuries old, when in fact, you hear these facts now, it's not that long. Even if we say it's 95 years old, still nowhere being 14 centuries ago. Okay, now let's go back to that slide again. Uh, there's the lahum, which used to be lahu, and now it's lahum, right. they, instead That's of right. he. Right. When do you think then that that lahum was corrected? It would have been later. No later doubt. than what? Later than the original writing of this particular So manuscript. this is not Ab Ab uh, Ibn Mujahid. This has nothing to do with Uthman. You're saying later than the standardization in Cairo, Possibly, hold on a minute, but that standardization in Cairo was not worldwide. That was only for Cairo. The standardization that became in Egypt, that was 1936. Well, that's only for Egypt. What about the rest of the world? So this manuscript here is in the Paris, Paris Library. Now, it is now in the Parisian Library. When was this standardized? In order to standardize it, you need to have a standard. That's right. You have to have something to go by. So it has to come after the standard. Correct. And if the standardization took place in 1924, then one can make the case that it was done after that. Are you going to make that claim now on television? Well, you know, uh, I will make that claim until we somebody proves me wrong or I can discover something else to support the fact that it was done at a different time. But regardless of this, somebody discovered a wrong reading and corrected it. That in and of itself an indicative of a mistake that was transmitted for a while and later it was discovered. And now those who learned it one way have to now realize that they were saying it the wrong way. With that in mind, let's now look at number three. Let's look at the correction number three that Dan Bubaker is putting out there. Uh, take a look at this slide. And you can see we have nine different slides of nine different post-production insertions of the word Allah. Correct. Now, these are from many different manuscripts. Uh, Dan Brubaker, when you read his book, go to his book, you will see he, he describes where each one comes from. Uh, they come from the Petropolitans, they come from the Samarkand, they come from the Topkapa. So uh, there is a, a, a concerted effort to get the name Allah in there. Why is that important? It's extremely important, of course. I mean, we can start with the same as, uh, you know, uh, presupposition I've been saying. It's to standardize it based on a 1924 reading. That's where you find Allah in there. And obviously, uh, sometimes even to fix the uh, personal pronoun, uh, maybe it wasn't clear, or making a theological change here, indicating that this is speaking about Allah, not a different person. It's imposed. Impo I would say it's even something much more mundane than that. It, they had to do this because the Huff's text has Allah in it. And that too, like places. I said, I mean, it's very clear here. You look at it, I mean, it's like, it's like it was added right here. We're going mean, to show it, it right now. Added there you right can here. see it. Look at yeah. the blue arrows, uh, the green air, uh, circles that are coming up. Every one of those, you can see where the Allah has been added. One yeah. after another, all nine of them up there. Now, Dan has found 12 of them. He just has nine on this page. So he's. Uh, this is only one exa uh, nine examples of 12 that he has found. Primarily, he said from the Fustat Umayyad Codex, uh, which the Fustat is the city of Fustat outside of Cairo. Yeah, and I shared with him some information also about the Samarkand, and he's still analyzing it. So 
these are all post-production. These are human intervention. Absolutely. Looks like they're standardizing, and they're not even they're not even trying to hide this. This is above the line. This is you can many cases just with a completely different nib. Yeah, they're squeezing it between two words. So and you can so on sometimes so squeeze. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Much thinner. Yeah. It's much later. These are Absolutely. darker. Uh, as you can see, these are standardization of a text to a standard. The standard only came into existence in 1924. We're going to keep reminding people of that. That's All right. of this had to have happened possibly, more than likely, after 1924. It's almost like Allah forgot about his name. That's basically <laughs> what it was. You yeah. can understand why this is so damaging. Now let's go to number four. Because here you have uh, a, a eraser in the Marcel II. Now this, let me just explain. The Marcel II is from the National Library of Russia. Anytime you see NLR, that's the National Library of Russia, which is in St. Petersburg. These are all of Dan's pictures. He went there physically, took, we got permission from the authorities there in St. Petersburg in Russia, and he was able to take the, these pictures. So this is from Surah 30. That means chapter 30, verse 9. Right. Now, it's, it is an eraser, but there's nothing to replace it. Why is that damaging? To me, that is hugely damaging. Well, because, I mean, uh, here's what happened. And they kind of like stuck with this word that is before it. And they had a choice. You erase the other word and elongate it, but it will look very obvious. Or it's possible that somebody just didn't bother to make any enhancements after they erased the word that they felt like. It shouldn't be there, so or we don't want to read it. The word at the front is akibatu, which is the fate, and aladina, Akiba, yes. which is of those, comes after it. So right. something was in between the fate and of those that had to be erased, had to be eradicated, uh, had to be censored. Correct. Obviously, how would they have known what? to censor it unless they had a standard from which to compare it with. And it's quite possible it there is nothing at that time that makes him compare it to other than maybe the standard, the 1924, doesn't have anything in here, and therefore they had to er erase anything that was added. Now, Dan says that, that the size of the eraser suggests a word which was four to six letters. And he said there are some possibilities. Uh, he said it could be uh, kulumin, all of, or katiran min, most of, or it right. could have been also... al -Yahud which is right. the Jews, right, right, and or Al-Nas, which is the people. So there are many possibilities what you could have put in there. So it could have been the fate of the Jews, of those Jews. It could have been the fate uh, of all of them or most of them. So there's many ways you could you could put it. But it's obviously, though that would have been fit, it would fit to put those words in there. They could not keep that word in there or those words in there because that would not uh, parallel the Huff's text that we're using today. Right. So this is sheer censorship for no other reason than to standardize the text. And the standardization, let's, let's focus here. We're not talking it was done early on. It's done later, 14 centuries later, which means there could be a possibility down the road another standardization might take place. I would suggest that all is a standardization that's been since 19. 24. Now, let's take a look at this book. Well, the next slide we want to look at actually goes to this cover here. Take a look at this cover, and you can see this is the cover he has on his book, The 20 Examples of Correction. This is correction number 5, uh, chapter 6, verse 91 to chapter 6, verse 97. Surah 6, ayah 91 to 6, ayah 97. Uh, this is from the Museum of Islamic Arts in Doha, which is in Qatar. Uh, you, this is one, again, that he took. This fascinating, he's looking at four different problems here with just this one page. That's why I think he put it on his front cover. Uh, the word alahi, why don't you uh, write, read it there? The word alahi, against him. That's right. Has been written over uh, in s chapter 6, verse 93. And following the words, and go ahead, wait, can you read that? Uh, the words in there, uh, bima kuntum taquluna. For what you, plural, used to say. Correct. Yet alehi is not in the 1924 Huff's text. <laughs> you know, here's the problem. It's not in the standard text. That means it's part of a different reading. So that's number one. Can you see number one? It's at the top there. So yeah, this is, is fascinating. And I can show the people. It's right here. This is the one that we're talking about. So they're is an eraser, they had to erase it, and then they had to introduce this word there 
in order to standardize it. It's in a, can you see it's in a different ink that he's circled there? Absolutely. Can you see it's also in a different style of handwriting? That's right. Much, much later. Now let's look at number two, which is just below it to the right. Yeah, Al -ala, about right Allah right, right. has been written in the barges. It's not even in the script. It's not even, they're not even trying to get it in the script. They're not putting it above the line or below the line like they do many times. They're putting it off to the side in the margin itself. But oddly, they didn't bother to erase Alehi. That is, that it is intended to supplant. They were supposed to erase Alehi. And that's the thing, you know, here's what I meant earlier, that they have looked at this inseparable pronoun and they replaced it with Allah to indicate that this inseparable pronoun has to do with Allah. But the problem is they did it and they forgot the old one. <laughs> this is, to me, this is ineptitude. Yeah. Fascinating that someone who knows Arabic that well, because this would be a native speaker in order to write this, and they, these, this, this is in Doha, so this is And now this the is the East. one that matches the Hafs. This is now the, no, well, actually, the Allah, 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 Allah is the Hafs text. That's right. This Ilahi is the one. Is not there. This is the one that matches. They the one corrected the it to match, and they forgot the older one. So that's already two problems we see on this page. But here's what's so problem about this. I mean, somebody might come back and say, well, it's still saying the same thing, alayhi, meaning uh, indicating now the him has to do with Allah. That's great. You can say this, you know. But you told me it was preserved in the heaven. So which way it was preserved? Uh, yes. And if they're going to preserve it the way they think it is in heaven, why didn't they erase what there shouldn't be there? That's right. <laughs> so and who decided what wasn't in heaven? Caught with red-handed, so to speak, with their hands still in the yeah. candy jar. Number three. Now That's let's look why at he was three. red. <laughs> the word Aladina, whom, uh, uh, has been inserted where it was at first omitted. And there you can see, if you could just circle it's it. There right you, here. There you go. You circled it in yellow there. It has been inserted. <laughs> it needs to be there because it's in the Huff's text. Yep. Since it's in the Huff's text, since in 19, canonized in 1924, they've got to insert. Can you see it's a different color? Can you see it's a different... Uh, Absolutely. I mean, you can spot it from a far away. I mean, it's darker, it's uh, fresher, different writing style, and it's odd. The location of it is odd. So that's number three. Now let's go to the bottom of that slide, and you can see number four. Here's the fourth problem. It seems pretty evident. You don't, I mean, you can just look at it. That's you can right. see right there's here. a problem. And the word Yahlamun, they know, has been written over an eraser. So there was a word there. What's fish fascinating, they didn't erase it well enough. They should have done a little bit better job. Maybe they needed uh, more modern pencils. The shadow of the original text can still be seen, and it appears to be Baha. Now that's yeah. those are the letters. That's the constant little letters. There could be all kinds of different words. That's right. That that's and right. Dan's going to be go into that and explain that more in his book. Absolutely. But can you see, you have at the very top of the page a word that they should have erased. They didn't. They kept it in there. A word that has been added to the margin, where which should be where the word they should have erased is. So they two problems there. They have another word that has been added in uh, Aladina above the word uh, above where it should where it is now needed because it, to standardize it with the Huff's text. And then at the bottom, they know is been been added. Yat Lamun has been added, but they didn't really erase enough of it to show that there is another word underneath, and we can probably start to understand what that word is underneath. I'm going to let Dan, in his book, actually explain that. So this is just a taste of these changes and corrections. And we said, you know, here is the book. Once again, I want you to take a good look at the title. 20 examples. In fact, Jay mentioned there is 21 examples and if we want to really, uh, uh, you know, give you a, a more clearer idea about the different corrections that Daniel looked at, it's in the thousands, as you heard. So this is just a taste of some of these things that existed in the early Quranic manuscript. And this is the intent of this series, is to highlight at least this particular book, but that's only a flavor of what is to come. Anything else? You want to add, Jay? No, you've, you've summarized it very well. We will then move in to correction number six in the next episode as we unpack it, show the significance, and showing that in every case, every one of these corrections are a standardization, a censorship, a need to try to create one Quran. All of them done by humans. In every case, exactly. this is done by human hand. And that's what we mean by the fact that the Quran is a product of human hands. It is not a divine book nowhere that it was revealed from heaven and evidence is that people 
have been taking the liberty of making changes, all the way starting with Uthman, if we want to go that far. He decided what dialects should be in, and from there, people decided what standard reading should be used. Hopefully, you're enjoying the series. Till we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.